So welcome everyone. Uh, this is the three steps to kayaking. And uh, my name is Hans from Track Kayaks. And uh, we are here today to uh, discuss the three steps to kayaking, uh, a real specific uh, element of it. But uh, this program is a virtual community really designed to help motivated enthusiasts develop as proficiency kayakers. And we focus on three things, understanding the tools required to get you into the right gear for the paddling you want to be doing, skills development to ensure that you're developing solid habits, and sea personship to help understand best practices in the dynamic environment of sea kayaking. So uh, thank you all for joining us today. And uh, this particular version I'm proud to introduce is the, uh, the forward stroke uh, for today's Zoom Away Blue Friday. Uh, so let's roll into this uh, right away. I'd like to, certainly it's my honor to introduce uh, the, the subject, which is the forward stroke. Uh, but most importantly, I wanna introduce our subject matter expert, um, track pilot, uh, Miss Paige Olson. And uh, uh, one thing about Paige that I really love is that, uh, you know, her paddling enthusiasm is really founded in her love for water. Uh, she started at 15 years old when she asked her parents for a kayak to get the whole thing started. Today, she's a sea kayak guide and instructor. She really cut her teeth working in the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. She's an ACA instructor. Uh, where she teaches courses for them. Uh, and she also is working toward instructor certification in Whitewater uh, and uh, is a uh, very avid and enthusiastic track pilot where she's contributed to programs like the uh, Track 2020 program in the development of our current flagship product, the Track 2.0, and has also been uh, really instrumental in helping our program development with the Pacific Rim Surf Camp, where she came out last year and was a, a, a big help helping to uh, get other paddles, paddlers up to speed. She really, her strength is really helping paddlers get the most out of the sport of sea kayaking to begin with uh, really strong, solid fundamentals. So we're really uh, honored to have her here today. Uh, Paige, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for the intro, Hans. That was very um, comprehensive. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, as Hans said, I've... <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell us where you are now, Paige. Oh, I think... Yeah, so I currently reside in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So as you can imagine, it's been a little crazy down here, but um, definitely been spending a lot of time getting on the water to de-stress. Um, I work full-time as a worksite well-being program manager and consultant, and... I got into well-being kind of through kayaking, actually, because kayaking really was my way of de-stressing and kind of being really meditative on the water. And now I work um, developing well-being programs for organizations. And so that's kind of the day job. And then I do instruct here and there, um, helped out with track in Tofino last year, as well as a track pilot summit in, I believe, 2018. And just try to get on the water as much as possible. Um, like Han said, I like a lot of different types of paddling, from sea kayaking to, you know, longer trips to white water. And so I think a lot of the stuff that I'll talk about today will lend itself well to, to folks, regardless of, you know, where you like to paddle, what you like to do. And I'm just excited to, um, to talk about the strokes. Terrific. So your home break um, is, in that, is in that area. Um, on the Great Lakes, uh, tell us, Paige, what is uh, what's next in the lineup for you in terms of uh, in terms of your trips? Yeah, uh, well, as you can imagine, some trips have been kind of put on hold due to the public health concerns right now. But you know, immediately we've been doing some weekend warrior day trips up to the North Shore on Lake Superior. Um, we're currently planning a longer thirty-mile day trip down the Namakagan River in Wisconsin which will be a nice, um, nice long day trip to get some miles in. But, you know, there's always ideas flying around in my brain of what to do next. Um, my partner and I would really like to get down to South or Central America to do some whitewater. So I think that's the, the big trip that we're mulling over right now. Um, but certainly hope to get back out with track um, in Tofino and potentially um, assist with other trips there. 
Okay, great. Well, you'll have to connect with Rodolfo there um, if you're heading down to uh, uh, the southern tip of South America. There's lots of great white water there flowing out of the uh, Campo de Hilos. So um, let's move on to uh, oh, yeah. uh, really, really your focus on coaching here. What do you most like about, uh, about coaching others in this, uh, in this uh, discipline? Yeah, I love instructing. And I kind of, kind of happened upon it when I was working in the Apostle Islands as a guide, and we eventually ended up doing some instructor certification. But I think what I like most is seeing other people progress to the point where it's so fun. I think with a lot of things, with paddling, with any other, like, you know, discipline, it's kind of hard at the start, right? Like, you're learning new things, you're trying to get the hang of it, it can be frustrating, you can feel like it's going slowly. But I love seeing people be able, being able to break it down and then you know, having that joy that they really are feeling it and getting super excited about it, starting to feel more confident. Um, and so that's my favorite thing to see. Like I remember in Tofino working with um, a gentleman named Steve and we were working on his boat stability and forward stroke. And by the end of the day, he was having so much fun, um, you know, a big difference from the start of the day. And moments like that are kind of why I just really like to instruct and and stay involved and get new people on the water. I love being on the water and, you know, everyone is welcome on the water. And that's one thing I love about paddling. Awesome. Terrific. Uh, well, thank you, um, Paige. Today we're going to talk about uh, a really fundamental piece that's super important. It's the forward stroke. Why is that, uh, why is the forward stroke so important to get right? Yeah. So the forward stroke is your most important tool, essentially, right? It's the thing that's propelling you forward. It's also giving you stability in the kayak, which, um, you know, some people might not think about the forward stroke being for stability, but um, really, if you're going to get, be a paddler and you're getting from point A to point B, the forward stroke, um, and being able to do it well and technically well is going to be a great ally for you so that you can move efficiently, you can feel healthy and good, um, you know, not feel any pain in your body. And it also transfers into other strokes. So if you have a really good technical forward stroke, um, that's really going to lend itself well to other things that you might start to do, even like your reverse strokes, um, bracing, draws, other strokes. Um, it really starts with a solid, solid forward stroke. And I think paddling, we all probably feel the same way that it's a lifelong sport, right? Like we want to be able to do this for ever. And having good technique is really going to protect your body using the right muscles and avoid any sort of injury there. Terrific. Awesome. So uh, it really sounds like the importance of the forward stroke is uh, not only does it provide propulsion, but it's really uh, the, the secret weapon to stability uh, and is a foundational piece to really set you up for all the skills progression moving forward in terms of all the other, other stroke development that you do. Um, that's really fantastic. So what's the overall goal of today's engagement page? What do you want to get across to folks in this particular call? Yeah, and I think I'm sure a lot of you are paddlers and um, the forward stroke seems fairly simple, but I think it's one of those things that no matter how good of a paddler you are, the forward stroke is something you can always work on and always improve. I mean, I know myself when I get tired, I, you know, get the lazy, lazy uh, lean back technique and just being able to um, always get better at your forward stroke is going to, going to just propel you further in your paddling. And so I think the goal today is just to break it down into bite-sized pieces so that you know, the little things that maybe we don't think about every day when we're paddling can sink in and then you can continue to work on it going forward and um, just to continue to refine your stroke because it's something that, you know, even professional paddlers that, that I know are always working on their forward stroke and they're some of, you know, the best paddlers in the world and they always are working on it. So it's something that it can be consistently, um, you know, made better and worked on and so we can break it down. Hopefully, um, you know, we can all get a good sense of the key points that we already have and can get better or key points that we're missing. Cool. I love how this is applicable to everyone. And, uh, you know, as an, as an educator myself and uh, as, a, as, as an enthusiast and uh, always uh, looking to develop um, different disciplines, uh, I love what you brought up is that uh, no matter where you are in paddling, uh, going back to the fundamentals like every now and then and really focusing on those with the information you have now and the strengths and the talents you have now really helps you progress a lot faster instead of always kind of pushing the edge, going back to fundamentals periodically is critical. 
Um, that's really fantastic. So let's talk for a minute a little about, uh, about what is the challenge or what is the problem uh, with forward stroke? Like what's wrong with uh, doing it poorly or, um, or you know, not having that proper development? Yeah, definitely. It comes down to a few things. Um, the first is going to be efficiency, right? So if your forward stroke isn't efficient, um, it's going to take you longer to get places. You might get a little more tired more quickly. Um, and paddling is just a little bit more fun when it feels good, it feels smooth, you're flowing, you have a good stroke. Um, so efficiency is certainly one, um, particularly if you're the type of person that likes to do longer trips um, or likes to paddle frequently. And then I think just your safety, right, for your, your body, if, um, you know, you want to protect your shoulders, protect your arms, protect your neck and lower back. It is important to have, um, have good form, and that good form is really going to strengthen the muscles that you need to be able to paddle. Um, one thing I probably didn't mention either, Hans, is I do have a background in um, personal training, and so thinking about the muscles that you use when you're paddling it with a good stroke it's only going to make you stronger versus if um, maybe you're using your arms too much or using the muscles in your back too much, it can cause some pain. So protecting yourself to be able to paddle long-term and being efficient for, you know, when you are on the water. Okay, cool. So efficiency, safety, and, uh, and longevity are the keys, uh, it sounds like. And if we don't get it right, then we basically compromise all those things. Uh, mm -hmm. Terrific. Um, well, I, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be that way, I know. So what is the opportunity here in terms of really uh, nailing the forward stroke? Yeah, I mean, I think the opportunity here is just to make paddling fun and safe for you, right? We, mm -hmm. We're here for a reason. We love getting on the water. We love kayaking. I'm sure some of you love other forms of paddling. Um, so it's really going to translate into you having a good time on the water, feeling physically good, and then translating that form into other parts of your paddling that'll even make, you know, other strokes, other maneuvers that you're doing that much better and smoother. Cool. Awesome. Um, uh, one thing that's, uh, then let's set the scene here uh, for us. Um, uh, Paige, walk us through then the, uh, the forward stroke, a proper forward stroke. Let's get into it. All right. Sounds good. Um, well, I do have a boat in my living room right now that I will be hopping in so I can demonstrate a little bit for you. Um, but I'll start by doing a little explanation, <laughs> like Hans's little get ready there, um, of the, the four pieces that we're going to walk through. So I like to break things down a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to digest because although the forward stroke can seem pretty um, simple, there are a lot of little bits and nuances to it that will make you a better paddler and the first that we'll walk through is going to be your posture and your connection to the boat the second is going to be the catch so once your blade enters the water the third is going to be really the stroke itself so that rotation piece and then the fourth will be just the recovery and how you transition into the next stroke so i'm actually going to hop in here so i can show you what it's all about Cool. While you do, while you do that, I'm just putting those, uh, those, those three points into the chat box here. So it sounds like uh, really the, the, the big areas we're looking for uh, are, a, um, are a posture, a catch, and a, uh, and, a, and a rotation. Yeah, and so we'll start with posture. And then once I kind of get through this piece, if anyone has any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, if Hans, you want to kind of monitor that so we can answer questions as we go. Um, so, but the first thing is really going to be perfect. The first thing is really going to be your posture, and I'm sure this is you're not a stranger to this idea. Um, but Hans had kind of talked about we were talking about regal posture, um, mm. really straight, straight up and down. Um, you know, you don't want to be leaning back. I see a lot of people sometimes in the recreational world leaning back a bit, but really straight up and down, and even a little bit forward leaning. You'll notice if you are paddling even in waves or maybe um, rougher conditions, if you even sit forward a tiny bit, it's gonna give you more stability there. So really straight up and down with a little bit of forward leaning. The second, which if you um, had listened to Zach Cruzens on one of the previous Fridays, he talked about the um, five points of contact in your boat. So along with that posture, you really wanna make sure that you feel good in your boat 
you're stable, um, you're tucked in there really nice. So those five points are going to be your back band and your seat. And you don't really want to be pushing back on that. Um, you really just want your lower back to be lightly touching it. If you're pushing back on that, that's going to cause a lot of other things to happen. Your feet are going to be pushing really hard on your foot pegs, maybe a little bit harder than you want them to, where really you want that connection in your hips and your thigh braces to be that control for you. So if you're noticing that you're pushing back, that's going to translate poorly into your forward stroke. Second point of connection is going to be your hips. So you do want to have, if you have hip pads, um, have those pretty snug on your hips. If you don't and you have um, just kind of part of your seat there, making sure your hips are connected to your boat so that you can do a little um, kind of wiggle in the water and make sure that your boat's feeling connected. Third is going to be your um, legs and your thigh braces. So it should feel good, feel comfortable. That's going to be really important if you need to make adjustments. And then your seat is going to be the fourth. So making sure that you have a solid um, seat where your sit bones are. And then your foot pegs or bulkhead is going to be the fifth. And that's kind of where um, Cole was alluding to body blade boat connection. This is going to be the body boat piece. You really want to feel like the boat is an extension of you because when you are doing your forward stroke, that's really going to help you propel forward. The boat is kind of part of you at that point. Another thing I'll say too with the forward stroke and your posture, and I'm doing bad posture right now, as you can see, um, is to keep your hips loose. Um, if you're feeling kind of wobbly in the water, maybe it's your first um, time out for the season, maybe you're more of a beginner, making sure those hips are loose and disconnected from your upper body is actually going to make you more stable because we are sitting upright. And if you're, um, you know, really tight into your upper body and hips, if you end up leaning one way, that's when you might go over. So really getting in the water, I just like to do a little hip wiggle to kind of loosen up my upper body from my lower body because your upper body and lower body are a little bit disconnected there. So every time I like to get in the water, I just kind of remind myself of posture, five points of contact, and then just getting loose. It, like the second that you're on the water, just spend, you know, 30 seconds wiggling around, getting loose, separating that upper body from that lower body. Cool. Awesome. P Any, Paige, I, I love that. I, I love that. I love how you tie basically the key to good posture is starting with the five points of contact. Um, and uh, the key, uh, once you have, have established good posture and one way to maintain it is to stay loose and to relax that. And uh, we, we've all heard the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the adage, uh, loose hips save ships. Um, really fantastic there. So, um, and uh, I love your reference back to the five points of contact uh, podcast that uh, Pat Cruzens did. Uh, that will be released on trackkayaks.com coming up here. So, um, uh, terrific. Uh, thank you for that. Um, the key, it sounds like, is uh, um, in terms of uh, in terms of posture, uh, is maintaining that focus all the time on that. I invite everybody on the call right now just to just to you know recognize where you are in your posture. Take a deep breath and just like uh, extend that out. Let's all just have good posture right now. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. F feel the difference, uh, Paige. I think what's clear is that, uh, and you've said it yourself, is that you know without that attention, we don't have good posture, and we really need to be attentive to that all the time. So uh, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any questions come through about posture before we move on to the catch of the stroke? I don't see any questions right okay. now, Paige, on, on exactly that. We've got some other questions coming in about kind of paddle choice and uh, length and blade size and feather that we'll address later on, but um, nothing specifically on posture. Sounds good. All right. We will move on then. So actually, I've got, I've got, I've got one. Got, just comes. I got one question. Just comes in. Sandy Evan is asking uh, with regard to the five points of contact. How close do we want the foot pedals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, um, and that's really something that you kind of need to feel out your comfort level. But you want your legs to be in kind of a, a V position, and I'll hop out quick so I can show you that. You don't want your feet to be falling asleep. Um, but you do want to be in kind of this V position. Um, 
and your feet should be close enough so that your thigh braces are snug against your thighs. So we don't want to have long legs. Your legs should never be straight. Um, you should never be reaching to touch your foot pedals with your toes. Um, they should be comfortably sitting on the ball of your foot, not to the point where your foot's flexed back, but to the point where your foot can be a little bit relaxed. Does that help? Great demonstration. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Yeah, so it sounds like the, they should be uh, they should be splayed and uh, sort of lightly um, uh, available to press uh, to press into the foot pedal. So when you when you press on the gas with your foot, you should be able to put good pressure into your thigh braces. Um, other than that, uh, without that, you should be able to have good mobility to kind of drop your legs in and out um, as you need to to uh, to stay loose and mobile. Um, but accessible mm -hmm. to really lock yourself in uh, as required for control. Yeah, and I cool. see Cole comment awesome. commenting in there too. Thanks, Cole. All right, so now we'll move on to the actual beginning of the stroke. Now that we have good posture, we're sitting upright, we've got those five points of connection, we've got our paddle. And the first thing to notice here is where to have your hands on the paddle. And you've probably heard this, the paddler's box. And so I'm gonna move sideways so I don't break my TV here. Um, the paddler's box will tell you where your hands should be. So if you put your paddle on top of your head and you have a 90 degree angle with your arms, that's your paddler's box. This is where you wanna start off with your paddle. Um, so if you're ever wondering, you know, are my hands too close, are they too far? Just do this, arms at 90 degrees super simple. And then you can make minor adjustments here and there um, based on your comfortability. So sometimes, depending on the type of paddling you're doing, you start here and maybe it is a little more comfortable for you to move it a couple centimeters out or in, right? So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Um, obviously, we don't want to be like this and we don't want to have our hands right above the blade. Um, but that comfortable, 90 degrees. Now we'll get into the actual paddle stroke. So when we start paddling, um, we really want to enter the blade in at our feet, our toes. And so that's going to be step one. And, you know, we don't kind of figure out how to explain this, but when you put it, the blade in at your feet, your hand should be at about eye level. So, you know, we don't want our hands up here, which I see a lot of people do. We don't want it way down here. Your hand should really be at eye level because then when you do turn, your hand is going to come across your face. And you don't really want to be dropping that hand as it's coming across. So step one, blade in at the feet, and your hand is going to be coming across your face when you start that rotation. You also want to have a relaxed grip on your paddle. I know it's easy to like give it the death grip and white knuckle, but um, it's going to feel a lot better if you have that relaxed grip. And that's really the starting point. And so we'll move directly into kind of the rotation piece. So paddle in at the toes. If your hand is coming across your face, that means we're not pulling back with our bicep muscle. And this is where like the bread and butter of the forward stroke really comes into play. It's that torso rotation. So when we're bringing that paddle back, we're not pulling it with our arms. We're rotating our whole body. And you see my hand coming across my face and my left arm is completely straight, right? Almost, it's not pulling back like this. And one thing that you can do to get that motion is imagine there's a beach ball right here in front of you because if you pull back, you're gonna hit that beach ball with your paddle. But if you rotate, you're not gonna do that. And so really, there's very little arm motion here. It's mostly just that torso rotation. So paddle in at the toes, rotate the paddle back to your hips, hands coming across the face, and then the paddle is coming out. Um, and that rotation, if you're not used to it, I'm sure most of you are, um, but if you're not used to it, it can be kind of a, a difficult habit to break pulling that paddle back like this. And so one thing that I can encourage people to do too to get that motion is hug your paddle like this and try kayaking <laughs> because that's going to force you to rotate your torso because I'm not using my arms at all, but I have to use entirely rotation to paddle. 
And so if that feeling of not pulling back and actually rotating is a little difficult, try this for a couple minutes. Really get that torso rotation going. Cool. So the forward stroke is a super core centric movement uh, I'm picking up from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's really going to be primarily core, which is great because when you're paddling, you're working your core. It's going to make you get stronger. Um, and so again, in at the toes, hands across the face, rotate out. And having good form with that first, um, first sweep with your blade, really setting you up for the next rotation on the other side. So if I'm going, pulling out, then my hand is here, it's ready to come across my face, blade in at the toes, out at the hips. And it really turns into this nice, fluid motion. Another thing I kind of like to, for metaphor, I like to use is Barbie arms. Um, so you know Barbie dolls, they can't, they don't really have very good elbow motion, right? So. If you can imagine kind of straight Barbie arms, this is very exaggerated, um, but that'll also help you get that feeling of that torso rotation. So we're in at the toes, hand across the face, out at the hip. If there's one thing you focus on, focus on your hand across your face and that torso rotation. I guess that's two things, but that's really the bread and butter um, of your forward stroke. And that's going to translate into propulsion. Again, that posture is going to help you. If you're leaning too far back, it's really hard to do that. If you're leaning too far forward, also going to be really hard to do that. But really just having that nice posture, starting with those arms fairly straight and really rotating that torso. The one thing you'll really be able to notice if you're not rotating enough is you'll be able to feel your bicep pulling the paddle in towards you like this which is not what we want. That's what's gonna cause a lot of fatigue on the water. Your core is a lot stronger than your arms are generally. So if you're pulling back, you'll probably get tired pretty quickly, but if you're using your whole body, that's gonna be great. And so that's kind of the upper body piece, right? We can't forget what's underneath no. the deck because our, I talked about the um, body boat connection there. And there's actually some things that happen with your lower body when you're paddling naturally. So when I'm paddling, I'm usually putting pressure on one foot on, on the opposite side of when I'm paddling. So if I'm paddling on this side, my pressure is going on my right foot, as well as the thigh brace. And that's really helping put that energy into the boat and propel you forward. And so really the body, the boat, the paddle, they're all working together. Not one piece of your body is ignored here. Um, and you'll start to feel that naturally. I don't think that's something that right when you get on the water, you should be focused on, oh, my foot should be pushing. Really focus on that upper body first, but understanding that that energy is gonna be transferred through your body into the boat and propel you forward. Great, fantastic. I love that to uh, really focus on the, the energy transference and how you have to have really consistent, steady, uh, constant pressure linking between uh, the water on the surface of the paddle directly through your core um, into your foot, uh, right onto that pedal to translate into the, into the boat that's going to propel you through the water and provide the stability by having um, uh, the, the resistance on one side through the paddle translated to the other side of the boat with the paddle, with the, with your foot on the pedal. That's really great. Um, uh, we've got mm -hmm. a question here from, uh, um, uh, from Nadia. Uh, she's wondering, um, you know, how do you, or where do you stop from pulling too far extra with your shoulder? Um, she's looking for any kind of tips or tricks for people who might be really hyper mobile like her. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think one is going to be that blade position. So not going further than your toes and your hips. I think I see a lot of times too people are, will end the, the stroke way back here and see where my arms are. This isn't allowing me to have good form because the blade is so far back that I can't really have my, my arm in the position I want. And it's actually, you're not really adding any energy by extending your stroke further. You're actually probably wasting energy at that point. So really getting that blade in at the toes and out at the hips, which is, it doesn't look like you've done a very long stroke then sometimes. Unless you're doing a sweep stroke where you're trying to turn your boat, forward stroke really should be toes to hips. Um, and then again, just keeping that paddler's box 
and your shoulders low in that box. Another thing I see a lot that can compromise the shoulder is shoulders coming up here. And see your hand is above your head at this point. Having your hand cross that face is really going to keep your shoulders in a safe position. If you're really getting to the point where you're pulling like this and your arm is up above your head, that's kind of where your shoulder is going to be more compromised. Cool. Awesome. Uh, one of the ways that, uh, that, that Pete adds to this about the, about the energy transfer, uh, track pilot Pete Kuhn says that he likes to think of it sometimes as he pedals his kayak as much as he paddles it. Um, uh, great, to, great to think about there. We also have um, uh, a question from Simon exactly. Can you say again about which foot pushes with which side you paddle with? Um, mm -hmm. Yep, so it's the blade that's in the water, I find that my body, the opposite foot is pushing. So if I'm pulling on my left side, I'm pushing with my right foot. And that'll naturally happen. You'll start to feel that. And again, if you're going to focus on one or two things, I would definitely focus on that torso rotation and your hand position, because once you get that, it's naturally going to push your body into that position. Um, cool. You know, it's, it's like riding a bike. It's like certain parts of your body just start to flow in that way, but it's going to be yeah, that opposite foot. Fantastic. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think to, to Nadia's point, then making sure that you get your paddle out at the hips is really essential for making sure that you're set up for that next forward stroke. If you go too far, not only are you wasting energy in the water, uh, but you're also not effectively setting yourself up for that next uh, stroke. So the longer term efficiency is really uh, to be considered there, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Terrific, awesome. Um, uh, so you've talked about uh, really uh, the, uh, the posture, how to really achieve great posture. You've demonstrated uh, the catch and the paddler's box and the importance of, uh, you know, having, having the paddle connected through your uh, five points of contact and having a really great hand position and relaxed grip. And then you've talked about the core centric element of rotation um, and how important it is to really have the essence of your paddle through that core, those big muscles of your body versus in your arms. Um, and then you've spoken specifically about how, how the recovery is essential to efficiency, but also set up uh, for the next trick so that you have good continuity and flow. Anything else you'd add to that in terms of ticks, tips or tricks or uh, ways that we can, um, you know, self-assess uh, how we're doing and how to improve? Yeah, I think if you're really trying to, to improve and self-assess, um, A, one thing you can do if you have a friend that you're paddling with is take a video. So have a friend stand on the beach while you paddle directly at them. And then you can really assess, you can take a look at your arm position. Is my hand coming across my face? Am I, you know, pulling back when I really should be rotating? Um, you know, is my torso moving pretty significantly with that rotation? Um, am I avoiding my hands up here? That's really going to be a great way for you to self-assess. Beyond that, I think it's a lot of feeling. You'll really feel that when you start to paddle efficiently and strongly and, and with proper technique. Um, you'll go a lot faster. It'll feel a lot smoother. It'll feel amazing. Um, so I think if you want to do a more technical breakdown of your stroke, video is a great way to do it. If you kind of want to go with the feeling, um, you know, it should feel good. It should feel smooth. Your body shouldn't, you know, be in pain other than maybe just general muscle soreness if you haven't pedaled yet this year. But that's going to be a really great way for you um, to assess. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, we've had a few questions um, uh, in, the, in the chat box here regarding uh, uh, specifically different paddles and uh, different strokes possibly for uh, for touring versus, um, uh, you know, other, other types of paddling here. I'm just going to uh, go back mm -hmm. to that question here. I think John was asking that. Um, he said, will you please talk about paddle length, blade size and shape, and feather for touring, um, and maybe specifically in a track? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll start with talking about Euro paddle, and then I have a Greenland spec here that I'll grab um, in a second. But Euro paddle length um, can be based on your, your arm length um, and your height, really. And 
sea kayaking paddles are generally longer than paddles that you would use, say, for whitewater. So for sea kayaking, I use a 205, which is probably a little long for me. I could probably use something a little shorter, but it's really going to be based on your height. Um, so I'd encourage you, I mean, there's tons of stuff online, like even little graphics, and maybe we can pull something like that up on to send out. But really, there's going to be some graphics based on your height. Um, but sometimes if you have a longer torso, then you do lower body. So it's really based on your personal height and, I guess, torso to to lower body ratio. Um, it's probably going to be beyond the 200 centimeter range um, for most of us, unless we're much shorter, um, have shorter arms. And then um, in terms of a feather, it's really going to depend on conditions. Um, I always paddle with a 30 degree feather when I'm sea kayaking because that really allows for this to happen in your hand. If you're paddling with a zero degree feather and you're trying to to rotate, this wrist is kind of locked in position because that blade is coming through, or this wrist, I should say. So again, this is going to be a personal preference thing, but if you are having your hands nice and loose in that paddle, um, that lower hand really loose, right? And you have your control hand. Um, I should talk about that. Generally with a feather, you'll have a control hand, the one that is not moving. So my right hand here is my control hand. And this is actually a 45 degree feather paddle. And so this is going in my left hand is really loose on the paddle. And then as I take my other stroke, this is happening to turn that blade. And the feather is really for wind and efficiency. If you're paddling into the wind, um, this is going to cut through the wind a lot better than this is. So I actually my sea kayak paddle is a um, that I use, I can change the feather on it, which a lot of paddles you can. And so I'll go anywhere from 30 to 60 degrees on it, depending on the conditions. So I prefer 30 degree all day, every day um, for sea kayaking. Some people might prefer 15, some might prefer 45, but for conditions of paddling and wind, um, higher feather is generally gonna be more efficient for you. Okay, terrific. So really, uh, in, in many ways, like regarding paddle length, it's just a product of the height um, and mm -hmm. the range that most uh, average uh, adults are working with are going to be in the 200 to 215 centimeter range. Um, and so finding your fit there um, is critical. And then it sounds like with regard to feather, um, there's two elements to it. One is just the, um, you know, what you're comfortable with in terms of wrist motion going from one side to the other. But the other consideration with regard to feather is headwind, uh, meaning that uh, if you're presenting a flat blade um, that's out of the water to the wind, it's going to have more resistance and uh, is going to impact your efficiency. And in those cases, you might want to increase your feather so you're cutting through that headwind um, a little bit easier for the blade that's out of the water. Uh, and that's a variable mm -hmm. consideration for you. Um, uh, I get that. Okay, cool. I hope that answers your question, John. And now um, you were, I think you're going to demonstrate another style of paddle, the Greenland uh, paddle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I know we have Pete Kuhn on the phone too. And he, I will say, I don't paddle very frequently, frequently with a Greenland paddle. So Pete, if you need to jump in and correct me, please do so. Um, but I'm sure a lot of you or many of you are familiar with a Greenland paddle. Um, there's a lot of really cool history behind Greenland paddles, if you're interested in reading up on that. But the stroke with a Greenland paddle is a little bit different. Um, and I find that it's generally a lower hand position than a European paddle. Um, reason being, the shape of the blade works sort of like an airplane wing through the water. Um, so it has to slice through the water at an angle versus the European blade. It's a little more vertical, um, perpendicular to the water. This blade is going to slice in um, because if you have this straight um, perpendicular to the water and you're trying to pull a stroke back, it's going to feather through the water. It's not going to be efficient. And so this paddle requires a little bit of a tilt. And then your hand position, while very, you still want the torso rotation, hands are still coming pretty close to the face. I find that my hand position is a little lower with the Greenland paddle. Um, so, and you kind of have to feel it out here. It's really kind of the position that the paddle is going into the water. Um, it's a bit more, I would say it doesn't feel as 
propulsive as a Euroblade, but it is still very efficient, very comfortable. Um, feels really nice on the shoulders. Um, Pete, would you add anything just on the basics of using a Greenland paddle? Uh, if anything, I find that it'll actually help you to develop uh, more of a rotation naturally, just because your hands are going to be a little closer. And if you try to uh, arm paddle that thing, it's going to tire you out a lot more because you can see right there where Paige had her hands up. They're in at about a 20 degree angle on each arm. So to get uh, that paddle to go through the water efficiently with a little uh, force on it, you've actually got to give a little more push on the blade that's in the air uh, than you want to be pulling because uh, that'll tire you out pretty quick. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And uh, th th Thank you for that, Pete. I think and uh, little little hats off to Rodolfo out there who down in Chile is actually got his paddles. He's got his Euro paddle and his Greenland paddle and he's practicing alongside. So uh, uh, a good shout out to Rodolfo. Go ahead, Paige. Um, yeah, I was going to say, Pete, you alluded to, to something just about helping you with that torso rotation. So everything we talked about already with the Euroblade is going to be applicable here. The big difference is going to be the blade position as it enters the water. And that's something that you will immediately feel. If your paddle is going in the water at 90 degrees and you try to pull that through, it's going to be, make sure I don't hit anything. It's going to be going like this in the water as you try to pull it through. Um, kind of like if you get speed wobbles going down on a bike or something like that. Um, but like I is on the end of the line or on the end of the paddle trying to pull it out of your hand. And usually yeah, just, that's tipping a perfect. It, just tipping it forward one or two degrees will set the, uh, settle the paddle down. You don't want to have the paddle trying to crawl out of the water. You actually cant it slightly forward and that'll help it make a smoother entry in there. And uh, when you pop that blade out, the other one dives right in. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. And like Pete said, your face, the way the paddle is, is made, this was actually handmade by a friend of mine. Your hands are a little bit closer. Um, and I think somebody commented very loose grip. Um, that's perfect, loose grip on the paddle, even looser than probably you would with your Euroblade. But it's good to have this in your, in your arsenal. I found that when I was doing long, long days um, out on the water, so 20 plus miles, I loved my Greenland paddle because it, put a little bit more ease on my shoulders for those long days. Um, whereas, you know, if I was maybe surfing or doing something um, a little more playful, I would be using my Euroblade. And one other thing I will mention with the Euroblade is um, we talked about forward stroke and what I showed you was a touring stroke and there is also a power stroke, forward stroke. So the touring stroke um, is like this power stroke your blade is going to be a lot more vertical. And that does not mean that your hand is up here. That means your hand is here, still across your face. Um, and this is going to be kind of more akin to a whitewater stroke, actually, um, where your blade is a lot more vertical. It's a little closer to the kayak. And if you're going for speed, um, if you need a couple really strong strokes to get somewhere, you really want your blade to be more vertical um, like this versus a little bit further um, from your kayak. And your hand position is really here. And I should grab, um, I do have something that's a little shorter. It's kind of hard to do this right now because I'm sitting on my living room floor, but um, really coming through like this and having that paddle be more vertical. Um, so that's gonna give you a lot of power, whereas your touring stroke is what you'll be using most of the time. Um, just your basic stroke that we walked through um, kind of throughout this call. And then the final tip I'll give is look where you're going. Um, you want to get somewhere, don't look at your bow. That's something that is an easy habit to get into. Um, that's probably going to make you a little seasick, make you less stable. Look where you're going, really focus on that point as you're working through that technique. Cool. 
Awesome, fantastic. One, uh, one, uh, one comment from Adolfo um, uh, that maybe Pete and you, Paige, can speak to is he's talking about the movement of the blade. I think he's talking about the Greenland paddle specifically. If it's the wrong angle, it can create some cavitation. Uh, what could you say about that? Cavitation. Good word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually, what Pete? I don't know. You might want to speak to that one. Okay. Usually what I find that causes the cavitation or a lot of people when they're first starting to use a Greenland blade is they'll hear a plop every time, every time they make that stroke. And the reason that's happening is the, the blade is not fully into the water before you're starting to move it uh, for, to get that propulsion. So there's two ways that we uh, kind of try to get people to take care of that is one of them is we call it stabbing the fish. So you actually take it, make sure you just put a little more effort in planting that blade in before you start the rotation. The other one is do a slice. Just make sure the blade slices down into the water before you start the rotation. If you just get the first half or quarter of the blade and you start to pull it back, you get the air pocket there and you hear plop, 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 and it's cool. just bobbing from your forward mom or uh, propulsion. Can I jump in quickly and make a couple of comments about Greenland stroke? And I think one of the um, big mistakes that people make is they don't put the blade in far enough. And one of the teaching tips that I often give is try to put your pinky in the water with every stroke so that you're hand is literally almost touching the water and that buries the whole blade into into the water and if you're holding the blade fairly lightly it tends to find the right angle i find so that you know if you're if you're gripping it that's when it's going to cavitate on you but if you're kind of giving it a nice loose hold it seems to work really well Terrific, fantastic tips. Wow, we've, uh, we've really taken a deep dive into the, into the Euro paddle versus the uh, Greenland paddle. I hope that really answers your question, John, on that one. And uh, just big shout out, thank you, Pete and Mike for jumping in on those, uh, on those elements. Um, uh, Paige, this has been a really thorough discussion on the, uh, on the forward stroke. Um, what would you recommend for people to uh, really uh, do to uh, advance their their forward stroke beyond the advice you've given of, uh, of uh, self-assessment and through video assessment? What's the real kind of uh, action item here? I think it comes down to practice, right? And I, you know, it doesn't have to be um, super intensive, but I like to do every time I get on the water, regardless of the type of paddling I'm doing, is spend just three to five minutes really taking an exaggerated stroke and paddling around kind of slowly um, to really prime your body and prime your muscles for that movement. It's, I think of it as like a sprinter warming up for their race, right? They're doing high knees. They're getting their arm position correct. So the second you get on the water, get a little wiggle, loosen up, make sure you have that posture, but then kind of slowly and maybe in a more exaggerated manner, really even like this slow, work through that torso rotation hands coming across the face. Because if you start off your paddle like that, um, it is priming that, your body for that movement. And that's where the muscle memory starts to come in. Um, so then you're really going to have a fun, efficient, feel good paddle. Um, so just, you know, even if you don't feel like doing a ton of practice that day, you want to go out for a nice, nice leisurely paddle, just a couple minutes really focusing on that, that form and that stroke and then being on your way. Um, beyond that, you can do exercises like paddling 90 yards in a straight line, trying to keep your boat straight, um, you know, doing some sweet strokes to turn around and paddling back and really just focusing um, on that motion. Because if you can get this down pat in flat, calm water, you're going to be able to translate that into when you're tired, when you're paddling in conditions, um, and even teaching others. Like maybe you have friends that you want to get on the water and they need some instruction and you're fully equipped to do that because you have really good form yourself. Terrific, thank you, thank you for that. I wanna include um, 
uh, a link here in the chat to, to everyone, and that is a, a, a single page sort of, uh, it's, a, it's a PDF uh, specifically on that forward stroke that breaks it down, similar to the way Paige has done today. Want to give a big shout out to Dax Justin, who's been uh, really uh, uh, instrumental in helping develop some of these graphic files, and to Cole, track pilot Cole, who's uh, really given us the guidance on this along with Paige and her presentation here. Uh, on the forward stroke, really great stuff, really great uh, foundational keys that can really open someone up to a uh, more fun in the water, better safety, greater longevity, more efficiency, and more stability in whatever they're paddling, whether it be a whitewater boat or a, or a, a track kayak or a hard shell kayak. Um, uh, want to just really thank you, Paige, for your uh, expertise here today, your great presentation, your, uh, your thoughtful demonstrations here, really rich content. Um, how do people get in touch with you, Paige? How, would, uh, how do we follow you and get more information and, uh, and you know, ultimately paddle with you? Yeah, I think the easiest way is just email. Um, my email is olson.page at outlook.com. Um, o L S O N Olson. I'll, and I'll put it in the, you, I'll put it in the if, chat here. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Feel free to reach out. Um, if you have questions, if you're, you know, ever in the Midwest and you want to paddle, I would love to. Um, so feel free to reach out that way. I'm on Instagram. It's page go paddle. Um, so sometimes I'll post some paddling trips there. Um, but yeah, I think email is just the best way to get in touch with me. I'm always happy to answer questions. And um, I also do appreciate like the other commentary because I'm, I'm always learning too. I'm not an expert on the Greenland paddle, so appreciated um, just the in-depth discussion we could have there. But feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always happy to, to kayak and, and answer questions. So. Paige, fantastic. We're just about to open this up to, uh, to questions and answers, and we'll open up mics here. Um, uh, before we do that, I just want to invite everyone uh, to for two things. One is you can see a lot more information on this forward stroke. You can see video presentations of it uh, and uh, some real challenges for um, – uh, employing the forward stroke through the foundations program that track puts out. Uh, the link is in the chat. It's foundations.trackkayaks.com. I invite you to go there and really dive into the progressions here. Um, also, I invite you to subscribe to the Beyond the Boat series at trackkayaks.com. We have two series, as you know about. There's this one, which is three steps of kayaking, and we also do a uh, slightly more advanced uh, topics of discussion uh, called uh, Keys to Avoiding Deep Trouble. Uh, so I invite you to go there. Uh, there is a, um, in addition to the do-it-yourself uh, version of the track foundations, uh, there is a really great program that uh, is led by um, track pilot and coach Cole that is called the uh, Kayak Skills Accelerator Program. And that's a do-it-together program uh, where we walk you through um, a, uh, an extended outreach with uh, coupling the uh, foundations program with a with active guidance through a, a, a private group a forum uh, where we give you uh, challenges and feedback and answer questions. It's a do it together version of the foundations program. Well, we've got our first cohort going through that now. We've had some really great results. It's a four month program. Check out the link I put in there to. Uh, uh, the Sea Kayak Skills Accelerator Program. I invite uh, anyone to jump in on that, get some personal attention with Cole to walk you through taking your paddling to the next level. And uh, um, our next call here is going to be uh, uh, the same time next month for Three Steps to Kayaking. And uh, two other programs we have going simultaneously is look for the Keys to Avoiding Deep Trouble. And we just had a kickoff to a really fabulous program for uh, around water and wellness called uh, 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 Wellness Equals Water. And uh, you can find that on trackkayaks.com.